So let's try to find out the Laplace transform of the function t raised to the power of n, where n is a natural number. So we have Laplace transform of t raised to the power of n is given by the improper integral 0 to infinity e raised to the power of negative st times t raised to the power of n dt. Now uh, we assume that this particular integral converges so for values of s greater than 0. Now we're going to make a substitution here. So let st be equals to u. So that we have, uh, now we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to t. So we have d over dt of st is equals to du over dt. So s being a constant, we can pull it out of the derivative. So we have dt over dt equals to du over dt. So that gives us s equals to du over dt. I can say that dt is simply equals to du over s. Also, we're going to change the limits. So when s approaches, uh, no, uh, not s, it's the t. So when t approaches 0, implies u approaches 0. And when t approaches infinity, then u is also going to approach infinity. So our integral now becomes, so we have Laplace transform of t raised to the power of n. So we have 0 to infinity. So we e raised to the power of negative st, which we consider to be equals to u times t raised to the power of n, since we have considered st is equals to u. So we need to change the value of t to s. So we have t will be equivalent to u over s. So u over s raised to the power of n times dt. So dt we found out that it's equals to du over s. So we get 0 going to infinity e raised to the power of negative u times u raised to the power of n du divided by s raised to the power of n times s. So we can combine it. So that will give us s raised to the power of n plus 1. So we can pull it out of the integral. So we have n 1 over s raised to the power of n plus 1, 0 to infinity, e raised to the power of negative u times u raised to the power of n. So u n, uh, the exponent of u can be rewritten as n plus 1 minus 1 du. So this was done because we will apply the uh, gamma function which states that the integral 0 to infinity e raised to the power of negative x times x raised to the power of n minus 1 dx is equals to the gamma function n. So if we apply this definition here, so we're going to get 1 over s raised to the power of n plus 1 times the gamma function of n plus 1. So we have applied the same definition here. And the question is given that n is a natural number. So when n is a natural number, then the gamma function n plus 1 becomes equals to n factorial. So therefore, the Laplace transform of Laplace transform of t raised to the power of n will be equals to n factorial over s raised to the power of n plus 1 where n is a natural number. So this is the Laplace transform of the given function t raised to the power of n. So we can even extend this definition. So if we have the function f of t given by t raised to the power of p where p is some rational number then, then the Laplace transform of t raised to the power of p. So following the same footsteps, so we'll get the gamma function of p plus 1 divided by s raised to the power of n plus 1. And for uh, the gamma function to exist, then p plus 1 must be greater than 0. Or we can say p must be greater than negative 1. So if we take... Uh, 
So if we consider P to be equals to zero, which is a rational number, then we have f of t is equals to t raised to the power of zero, which is one. So we have Laplace transform of t raised to the power of zero will be equals to the gamma function of zero plus one divided by s raised to the power of zero plus one. Then we have gamma one divided by s. So the gamma value of one is also simply one. So we have one over s and we have already uh, found this value in the previous section. So we have so two formulas so the the Laplace transform of t raised to the power of n is simply n factorial over s raised to the power of n plus 1 where n is a natural number and of course s must be always greater than 0 and Laplace transform of t raised to the power of p will be the gamma of p plus 1 divided by s raised to the power of n plus 1 where p is some rational number q and p must be greater than negative 1 and of course s must be greater than 0.